you disagree with them, they threaten you. Thousands of hacked emails showing global warming scientists blasting researchers who do not buy into their doomsday scenarios. One of the scientists threatening to, and I quote now, beat the crap out of my next guest. Pat Michaels from the Cato Institute joins me now. Pat, welcome to the program. I just want to move on real fast to the threat. Yeah. Uh, let me quote that one. I'm really sorry that you have to go through all this stuff, Phil. Next time I see Pat Michaels at a scientific meeting, I'll be tempted to beat the crap out of him. Very tempted. Now, wait a minute. An email? An email that the supposed target of the threat was not even aware of? Uh, that's not a threat. This is a threat. You know what happens to nosy fellows? Huh? No? Wanna guess? Huh? No? And this is a threat. You know, we have this, we have your phone numbers, by the way. So if you're listening, Mike, we have your phone number. And we're going to turn it over to Fox Security. And you'll be getting a little visit. Some threats are serious. And some threats are not meant to be taken seriously. How would you like to be the first human being to land on the moon? <laughs> ah, shut up. 13 years of emails, and the worst they can find is a privately expressed temptation to punch someone at some unspecified future time? Right. Call the cops. I could have you arrested. <laughs> ah, shut up. A more potentially serious accusation, however, has been leveled in some quarters. The real problem here is the email showing these guys trying to intimidate the editors of the major scientific journals and succeeding. In other words, keeping me and my friends and my colleagues from publishing in the referee literature. If true, the charge would indeed be a serious one. The prestigious journal Nature looked at the evidence and summarized their findings in a recent editorial. The editors write, a fair reading of the emails reveals nothing to support the denialist conspiracy theories. In one of the more controversial exchanges, UAE scientists sharply criticized the quality of two papers and vowed to keep at least the first paper out of the upcoming fourth assessment report of the IPCC. Whatever the email authors may have said to one another in supposed privacy, however, what matters is how they acted. And the fact is that, in the end, neither they nor the IPCC suppressed anything. When the assessment report was published in 2007, it referenced and discussed both papers. Of particular interest is the paper by doctors Willie Soon and Sally Balunas, both of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. The pair had co-authored a paper that asserted that the 20th century warming trend was not unusual compared with other shifts over the last 1,000 years. Published in 2003, the paper came to the attention of Senator James Inhofe. Senator Inhofe, who is well known in scientific and environmental circles, was then chairman of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. Mr. Inhofe is known for holding decidedly contrarian views on scientific matters. In 2008, the League of Conservation Voters awarded him a perfect zero rating for his legislative record on environmental issues. In a recent memorable speech, Mr. Inhofe made it clear that he's in denial about a lot more things than just climate. I'm really proud to say that in the recorded history of our family, we've never had a divorce or any kind of a homosexual relationship. In 2003, Senator Inhofe was concerned that the country was close to adopting a bipartisan climate bill. Republican Senator John McCain and Democrat Joseph Lieberman had crafted a bill that was soon to get a hearing on the Senate floor. The Soon and Balunas paper seemed to come at the right time for Inhofe to make it the centerpiece of his opposition. The scientists seemed perfect allies for Inhofe. According to a story by Andrew Revkin in the New York Times, the paper itself was underwritten by a $53,000 grant from the American Petroleum Institute. Both scientists receive income from the Exxon-funded George C. Marshall Institute. Dr. Soon was also associated with the Exxon-funded TechCentralStation.com and the Center for Science and Public Policy. The paper had been published in an obscure journal called Climate Research, 
one of whose editors had expressed skepticism about human causes of climate change. The process that followed has been compared to the tactics used by creationists to promote their agenda. Skeptics find what they consider to be a weak point in the mainstream theory and critique it. Not by conducting original research, they simply review previous work. Then they find a little-known journal or an editor sympathetic to their viewpoint hangs his hat. They get their paper through the peer review process and into print, and they publicize the hell out of it. Hearings centered on the paper began the same week that McCain and Lieberman were trying to force a vote on their climate bill. Inhofe portrayed Soon and Balunas as Galileos, bravely opposing the orthodoxy of their time, and their paper as a groundbreaking, paradigm-shifting masterpiece. Mainstream scientists fought back with a devastating critique. Other members of the Climate Research Editorial Board expressed strong misgivings about the paper and the process by which it was rushed to publication. Five of the ten editors resigned, and eventually even the journal's founder, Otto Kinney, agreed with the critics that the paper's thesis could not be convincingly supported from the evidence provided. But the hearings had the desired effect, creating an air of confusion and doubt that clouded the debate around the climate bill, which eventually failed to pass. The tactics being used today are the same. The carefully timed release of stolen emails is being used to cloud the overwhelming science behind climate change, just as the global community has gathered to take action in Copenhagen. But many in the media smell the manipulation that's going on and are beginning to see this teapot tempest for what it is. Mainstream scientific organizations, including the American Meteorological Society and the American Association for the Advancement of Science, are reaffirming their support for climate science. The journal Nature has called the denialist frenzy paranoid and laughable. The conservative economist dubs the deniers foolish. At the same time, the World Meteorological Organization has announced that this decade has been the warmest in recorded history, and the US EPA has opened the way towards regulation of CO2 emissions. Mohammed al-Saban, Saudi Arabia's lead climate negotiator, told BBC News that he expected the email non-story to derail the International Climate Summit. It appears from the details of the scandal that there is no relationship between human activities and climate change. The Saudis' longtime allies in the American political establishment picked up and amplified the message. Leading Republican intellectuals weighed in against the weight of the science. At the same time, a campaign continued against climate scientists, with break-ins and theft reported at Canada's leading climate change study center, with strangers attempting to impersonate IT personnel. Meanwhile, climate scientists began to receive real threats of physical harm and even death. Fox News produced polling data about the affair, which apparently surveyed an astounding 120% of the U.S. population. The forces of ignorance and anti-science are lashing out as they feel their worldview is under threat. We can expect more turmoil in coming months as they become more and more desperate. If you're someone concerned with seeing the world as it is and you think the denialist case doesn't add up, keep coming back to climate denial, crock of the week.